Hello everyone, in this video we are going to look at the imaging of a child who presented with vomiting and bloody drainage from the gastrostomy tube. This child had undergone multiple prior bowel surgeries for necrotizing enterocolitis. Patient initially underwent abdominal radiographic examination. On the abdominal radiograph we can identify the percutaneous gastrostomy tube. Immediately adjacent to that we can see a large soft tissue density lesion there are multiple gas filled dilated bowel loops. So the soft tissue density lesion was indeterminate and patient subsequently underwent ultrasound examination. On the ultrasound examination immediately adjacent to the percutaneous gastrostomy tube there was this arc shaped surfaced lesion with posterior acoustic shadowing which was indeterminate. Patient underwent CT examination for characterizing the soft tissue density lesion on the CT examination, we can see the percutaneous gastrostomy tube. In the bowel loops below the gastrostomy tube, we can see this endoluminal particulate material which contains multiple bubbles of gas in concentric circles. Upstream to this particulate mass, there is dilatation of the bowel loops consistent with bowel obstruction. We can see similar findings on the coronal images. We have endoluminal particulate material which contains concentric layers of gas. Upstream to that, there are multiple dilated bowel loops. To summarize, the child had soft tissue density lesion on the radiographic examination, which on ultrasound had arc-shaped surface with postaquistic shadowing. On the CT, demonstrated endoluminal particulate material with multiple internal locules of gas. Imaging findings are consistent with bizarre causing bowel obstruction. I found this article which uh, compared the ultrasound and CT. They found that both were reliable in terms of diagnosing BZR. However, CT was more accurate and demonstrates characteristic imaging appearances. Also, CT had the advantage of showing more BZRs which can be occult on the ultrasound examination. This is an interesting article from the literature where they were trying to differentiate feces from BZR. They relied on three important findings to differentiate BZR from feces, namely arc-like surfaced intraluminal mass, postaquistic shadowing and twinkling artifacts which were seen on BZR but not on feces. Images from the same article to illustrate the findings. In this first example, they are showing the imaging appearances of BZR. On the CT, you can see endoluminal particulate material. On the ultrasound, we can clearly identify arc-like surfaced mass with postaquistic shadowing which has twinkling artifact. Compare that to a different patient with feces at the transition point which has endoluminal particulate appearances. Not very different to the appearances of the BZR. However, on the ultrasound, it does not demonstrate arc surfaced appearances. There is no postaquistic shadowing and on the color Doppler imaging, there is no twinkling artifact. I hope you found this case to be informative. Thanks for your attention.